Welcome to Cairo Author Insights. I am with Dr. Madia Sayed, and this is going to be what I believe is an epic interview and an epic journey. The author of the number one bestseller, The Holistic RX, Your Guide to Healing Chronic Inflammation. Dr. Sayed is a functional medicine doctor who really owns holistic health. And before we go into a little bit more of the interview, I just want to introduce a couple of things about Dr. Sayed, which I think one will become self-evident and you'll know and understand it's, it's important for us to really, for me at least, to address this up front um, with you. It's just you own holistic health. You've transformed your own health and quality of life, moved beyond hypothyroidism, skin conditions, joint pain. But it's also your service really to not only your clients, your patients, but the patient um, experience as well. You're the director of education at Documenting Hope, which is an organisation dedicated to healing chronic diseases and illness. Your passion is for helping families heal and prevent disease. And what that means, and when I look at you, is your willingness to serve, contribute, to add value, to impact the planet. You bring incredible enthusiasm, energy, and passion. An amazing doctor, a best-selling author, one of the most dynamic speakers I have ever had the pleasure of, but not only interviewing, but meeting. Dr. Said, welcome, and I'm excited to hear your message today. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. It's such an honor. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Well, you are very welcome. <laughs> well, on is mine because I'm so excited about this. I'd love to hear you just a little bit about your story because while we, again, in these interviews, we're talking to you know, incredible um, breakthrough practitioners that are doing great things, and your Holistic RX and the next book as well have made a massive impact. But before we get into the book, Share with us a little bit about your story and you know, what's brought you on the journey, not only into to medicine and to health and well-being, but you know, the experiences that you've had in life that have shaped who you are. Oh, that's a loaded question. Are you ready for that one? That's fun. So I think I was born, uh, a little bit more about my background, I was born and raised in Naperville, Illinois, so I've been here in the Midwest almost all my life, went and to even complete a residency in South Bend, Indiana, and where me and my husband were both interns, so both of us are board certified family physicians. So what's important to know about my background is that I had the same bad habits that have led most of children and adults down the road to chronic disease, unfortunately. My mom was a first generation, you know, like, so I can, you know, she, she came in, um, from Pakistan, so we were first generation here, and uh, for her, food was love, and so I remember having an entire basement pantry, like closet storage area was filled with all these artificial cereals, <laughs> and uh, every day it was like, oh, what cereal do we want to eat today? Oh, look what the fun next thing is, and taking cans of, cans of soda to school every day, and so I had all of those same bad habits. But um, so I started getting sick a little bit then uh, with digestive issues, then um, acne and irritability, you know, irritability and weight issues and digestive issues and eczema. And so I, it just sort of continued to progress. Me, my brother and my sister. So my parents have sacrificed. Literally, my dad sold his entire house. My dad quit his job. The family Basically, my dad sold everything they owned and downgraded tremendously just so all of his kids can become doctors. And so my brother is an interventional cardiologist. My sister is a pediatric ICU physician. I have every doctor in my family. And I'm married to a doctor. And my father-in-law is a doctor. My brother-in-law is a doctor. All my cousins are physicians. So, <laughs> you know, everybody on my husband's side are also physicians. So we come from a really rich background of knowledge and love. Yes. And I think both of those connected to me because especially when I got sick, that's when it really came, you know, I felt like I was sort of stuck and hopeless and I had never grown up hopeless. I was always, my parents were like, anything is possible. You can do anything you put your mind to. We got this, whatever you dream is, go and accomplish it. But then I developed Hashimoto's and then lupus and not when I, you know, but I, but I was in residency. So me and my, so I was a new mom, a new wife, a new resident all at the same time. 
and I was miserable. But again, you stay on the hamster wheel, right? We stay on that hamster wheel just like everybody else looking, thinking about, because that's what we were taught. That's just my new normal. Because there's really nothing you can do until the symptoms are outweigh the side effects of the medications. <laughs> and that's when you start taking those medications. And so I wasn't there just yet, but I was still miserable. And I didn't want to go down those roads because I knew I've seen patients who died from lupus. But it wasn't until when uh, my husband had this gut inclination. And he's like, can you go check up on our 10 month old at the, at the time? And he's like, I just feel like something's wrong at the daycare. And I'm like, nothing's wrong. Guys never have inclinations that make sense. Oh, no, no, but I'm like, okay, just to please him, to shut him up, I'm gonna go check up. <laughs> so I was very fortunate because the daycare provider, the daycare was attached to the hospital. So that was awesome. I walked on over there and that's when my nightmare unfolded. And the daycare provider, his arms are tied down, his legs are tied down, he had a pacifier in his mouth. He was basically being suffocated to death with his Winnie the Pooh blanket wrapped around his head. And I looked at her, I'm like, you could have killed my child. And I ran out of there. So that gut inclination was, and then ever since then, I'm like, well, we always, always going to listen to our gut. <laughs> but on top of that, I think what the bigger message that I learned here was I, I picked up this child and I'm like, God, universe, you know, I, I promise I'm going to take care of this, this child the best that I know how, because I know it was all you. It was none of us that saved him. And so I took care of this child the best that I know how, but how am I supposed to take care of these children if I myself am falling apart? And as a family physician with all of this wealth of knowledge, that's when I'm like, there has to be some other way. I am not going to let lupus take over my life. I am not going to let digestive issues take over my life. I'm not going to let Hashimoto's or fatigue or, you know, weight gain or, you know, all of these digestive issues take over my life. So that's when I really dove into trying to find a different way and how I can empower myself because I was not taking no for an answer. And I, I <laughs> so I basically, uh, right after residency, I joined this medical practice where under one roof, there was me and OBGYN and internist and exercise physiologist, the nurses counseling, chiropractor, massage therapy, all brought together for the complete healing of the whole person. And that's when, you know, where you put conventional medicine and you put all of the holistic medicine collided all into one and uh, it blew my mind because as doctors we were not taught to look at anybody as a whole we were only taught to sort of compartmentalize and that's it and then literally we were taught that i was slapped on the wrist every time i spent a little bit longer with the patient and even till now my husband or my sugar daddy as i like to call him <laughs> he has to see 110 patients a week for our paycheck not to go half, so he has to be stuck on this RVU schedule, and nobody cares about how many patients you heal, they only care about how many patients you see. So when I joined this medical practice, it was a completely different world, and one of my first patients was a 31-year-old with nine autoimmune diseases, all gone in six to seven months, where she had myasthenia gravis, psoriasis, like Aspana, Sjogren's, Hashimoto's, like the list goes on and on, and now she's a scuba diver instructor. And I was, all we did was lifestyle. And I'm like, what is, my mind was blown. I'm like, what is going on here? Why did they hide this from us for so long? And um, I think it also, um, I also became, my grandfather was a homeopath. So with all of us being allopathic physicians, my, my grandfather was a homeopath. So in order to make him proud, I, I learned homeopathy in residency. And then I'm like, cool, let me try this. Let me start. And I learned it. So I'm like, I was just doing it just to, you know, make him happy up there. I was like, oh, grandfather, I'm doing this for you. Um, I didn't know, know I was ever going to use it until now. But that then when I started implementing lifestyle, you know, all of these mental health, you know, all these things that I've learned about gratitude and meditation and yoga. And then now you add on the homeopathy with integrative medicine. I've, again, huge, like, 50 year a 70 year old with 50 years of psoriasis is all gone by just a homeopathic I'm like what is going on here that's when I when I saw the holistic aspect and the integrative aspect started learning the functional aspect realizing there was not one book that put it all together and I had to learn it all myself so that's when the book V Holistic Rx your guide to healing chronic inflammation and disease of birth <laughs> because um my husband being full-time physician 
and then me popping out children one after another, I was, uh, I went part-time. So it was two days a week in clinic. The rest of the time, I really wanted to take care of these kids and teach them the morals that um, I didn't want society to teach the, my kids morals. I wanted them to teach them more, my, them the morals. And, um, and I'm, that's why then I started Holistic Mom MD. And alongside my medical, alongside what I was doing at home, then researching, reading, educating, you know, learning nonstop, going through the studies. So while my kids were in the library, they were there while I was diving through medical research and books. And, and that's when I'm like, this is how I can help the world. And so this is where I, this, this is my first book. And has, has, since then, I don't think I'm stopping now. I'm not number five and six. <laughs> And again, the beautiful thing is, the thing I love about your story is you've taken this experience of you know, what could have been debilitating for one person and disempowering for another, but it became a source of inspiration. And, and it was your game changer to, to, to empower yourself, to educate yourself, to become a, a, a vessel of, of, of healing and, and hope and transformation. And so that then all came together in this, this pivotal moment of I take all of the knowledge that I've got the wisdom that I've accumulated, accumulated the love in my heart to serve, and then you pour that into a book. And Absolutely. it has that ability then to change lives at a, at a far broader scope, at, at, at a way that you couldn't have otherwise done because you're in practice, again, just as you said with your husband, there's the limitation of time. But with a book, you, you share your message once in a book and it touches tens, if not hundreds of thousands of lives. So mm -hmm. share with me a little bit about the journey you know, you've, you've, you said you brought that book out from that experience. Tell me a little bit about that journey in writing the book and in, in taking the knowledge, the research, the wisdom, the understanding and putting it in to the pages, you know, of, of a written work. Absolutely. So they never teach us this in residency, you know, on how to write a book. That's for sure. Like, so I had to learn it all on my own. And this is where I love what you're doing. And because I really felt that, Every corner I turned, whenever I asked for help, it was like, yeah, but how much money are you going to give me? I'm like, I don't have anything, like thousands of dollars for me to coach you. And I'm like, I'm not even there yet. I don't even know if this is what I'm going to do. Like, I don't even know. Um, and I just always felt it was just too much. And I didn't know where to go that I could get trusted information. Um, so thank you so much for bringing this out there. Because I think um, there's so many people that know that this is what they want to do, but they don't know how to get there. Um, and so I was there, you know, because I had, one, I didn't know who to trust, who was I going to, I would love to pay somebody, but I didn't even know if they were going to give me the right advice or not. So it's very, it was like this entire, entire world of confusion. And so I did, I just did my research, just like I started learning functional medicine after Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine. I did that fellowship, and then I started learning functional medicine and integrative and all this fun stuff. Just then, I also started looking into <laughs> how am I gonna get how am I gonna get this book out there? And uh, um, I wish it was as easy as conceiving a child. Actually, no, not the most, but <laughs> <laughs> a couple seconds. But um, I wish it was that easy. But the thing is, it was. Here, it was a little, a lot difficult. And I think the more difficult it is, the more, um, you know, the more beautiful it becomes. And it was, you know, going through, I think the one of the first couple books that I went through was, you know, that I went through the writer's market. And I went through uh, Jeff Herman's guide to find literary agents. And uh, I think that the Jeff Herman's guide to literary agents was really where I learned how to write a book proposal and looked how to write a query letter. I did find one person that was going to help me. She was the editor that I got out of a trusted source and she was able to edit my book proposal for me. So she was actually um, a previous editor from New Harbinger Publishers. So I'm like, okay, this is somebody I trust. So she edited my first book proposal and I gathered all the names from you know, all the names that I had from the Jeff Herman's Guide to Literary Agents, started sending them query letters. And obviously in the meantime, so that was just while I was working on that. In the meantime, 
it was also the uh, building my platform and trying to figure out how I was going to continue to rise to the top because obviously book publishers, especially if you wanted to go the traditional route, the book publishers are really looking for, um, you know, that platform. And not until, so I was at this time, I don't think I had like the huge, tremendous platform. And that's what I really want to tell your listeners. Um, all the things I was doing, I was doing voluntarily, but I, start, I was writing for Holistic Primary Care, which is, which is a platform. Um, and Eric from Goldman there, he gave me, um, he's an amazing human being. He's been helping me through this journey from the very beginning. Uh, from Holistic Primary Care, he gave me a letter of recommendation, so that was really cool. And um, I started, I was a director of education for Documenting Hope. So those are the two main organizations that I started to work for, volunteer my time with. And I was able to write those that into the book proposal, um, gave him my idea, and actually Jeff Herman picked up my information. So the, the one book that uh, the Jeff Herman's Guide to Literary Agents, I actually sent it to Jeff Herman. And he was actually, so he's the, the agent for Men Are From Mars, Women Are For Venus, um, you know, the lots of different holistic books out there, specifically the, um, you know, for all these holistic books. And the one of the specific ones that I really wanted to bring to the next level um, I think this is called Prescriptions for Natural Heal Cures. And I really wanted to take that to the next level. And he loved it. And it was, that's I think when it started, um, I think it came out of the sheer love and passion for this that made him see that. Um, and then he took me on. And I think that was a huge blessing. Uh, six months later, we found a publisher. And then Six months later, I had to submit my book. And then eight, eight, nine months later, after that, my book was released. It's an amazing journey. <laughs> the, the part that I love about that is that it still stems from that place of service. You know, there's so many reasons or motivations to write a book. You can write a book because you want to grow your practice, because you want to see more new patients, or you can write a book because you have a story to tell, a message that you have an, an impact that you want to deliver into the lives of, of people that you don't know, but you know that you can help because you, you, you can change and help the lives of, the, of these children, of these families. And you started with a, with a place of service of, I'm going to volunteer my time, I'm going to dedicate my knowledge, my skills, my efforts to impacting people that, that I may never get anything back from. I'm just gonna write from a place of love educate from a place of service and contribute because my heart is called to do that. And the natural byproduct of that is you do get reach, you do build a platform because people that serve are generally rewarded for that on some subtle level at times, on a high level, um, but certainly it, it gives you opportunity to, to create networks, to, to communicate with people. And the, the greater the reach you have, the bigger the impact and the more substantive service means that you become known and then you can have a greater influence and impact. And so I love the fact that you've come from that heart centered service place and you've been able to, you know, develop this incredible um, following this amazing platform, which is a natural byproduct of that. I know you didn't necessarily set out to do that, but there's a mindfulness that when you give, you, you do receive it's a, it's a universal law. Absolutely. You know, and this is where, um, so I have, I, I did, I have a huge message that I was like, okay, the world needs to hear this. And for me, um, for, for me, if me as a physician was, I, if I was suffering, trying to figure out what pieces to start into my life, what pieces are caught easy, fast, cost effective. And that's why I actually had put together for everybody else. I mean, just when I started off, just wanting to help my patients really put together all the functional, integrative, holistic solutions for over 80 conditions, all in one source, source for all ages. And um, because I wanted to help, you know, really, if I, because I was left as a physician with all of this medical background, with all of these people that loved me, that are physicians, uh, if they weren't able to help me and I felt hopeless, I really wanted to provide that hope to people. 
and I and I think that still drives me to this day where now I'm seeing with the COVID situation and now wanting to get people healthier and you know just and then what's happening to our families what's happening with the um, society with the world with how our children's health is going I'm like if I'm not going to be saying something then somebody's got to do it <laughs> so like so it better why not be me and um, and that's what I actually tell my children too. I'm like, you guys have been blessed with this information. Let's go ahead and educate. So we started a the Holistic Kids podcast show, and uh, the so they're they're interviewing kids, they're even interviewing adults. Um, and so just again, I think it is absolutely right. It's just do what you ba- can to bring your very best to the table, and then when you see that, when you just put your heart all out there and it really does um, come back. And I have seen that over and over and over to the point where you, if you, the more that you put out into the world with positive energy, the more it comes right back to you. And to the point where, I mean, now I've been doing talks um, for um, what, what, one of the stages I just did a talk on like before COVID time was on the stage of 12,000. And how did I get that? It was just by offering to help um, one person <laughs> for free, like for free. And because I was like, she's this lady is so awesome. I would love to help her. And then the, the next day she was sitting right next to me. And then I was like, oh, here's my book. I would love to help you. This is so awesome. You could totally do this. I'll be your cheerleader. cheerleader. Not to recognize. I had no idea who she was. I just knew that she needed help. And um, I helped her um, and then she's like, can you talk to my mentor? And I was like, sure, I'll talk to your mentor. And so I was on, I was on the road anyway. So I'm like, sure, I'll talk to your mentor. So I'm talking to her mentor, not realizing. Um, so he, his, her mentor, her mentor was 70 years old and him and his wife were 70, had dealt with all these chronic health conditions. And not to realize that this mentor one, all of his it's just all of his symptoms disappeared in one week. But um, this mentor was a second in charge of the United Nations. Wow. <laughs> so you, I'm telling you now, my platform is international, just by helping just a couple individuals out of the sheer like pure like I was not going to get anything else out of this in return, and it just and now they've sort of adopted me as their child. And I call, I, I would tell them, I'm like, you're like my, because they don't have children of their own. So they're guiding me through this process also to help me. And to the point where he's even sending books to my 12 year old, who he wants to, he, to educate him to be on the world leader stage. Wow. So now they wow. sort of adopted him or them as their grandkids and sending them books and to try to create leaders in these children also alongside that. So now, I mean, you just put like a little bit out there and the universe will come screaming through it's, you know with, with doors will open that you cannot even imagine and so i know that's where um so my my second book is um is coming out september hopefully uh, if it all goes on track and your it's the uh it's a children's book adam's healing adventures Beautiful. And uh, uh, from sickness to health to really educate children. And hopefully, in my mind, I'm going to create an entire series of functional medicine for kids. And um, and then my third book is an international book that's coming out internationally because there's no other Muslim that is doing what I'm doing. And um, they actually want to put that book in every country of the world. So... <laughs> I know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it is, and that's the person who just messaged me right before we got on, how they want me to do now one for the, the situation that we're dealing with right now. And he's ready to put it on every country of the planet, because he has that, it's a wide distributor in, um, in England. But it all just started from, and just what you just said, it all starts from putting yourself selflessly out there, obviously still taking care of yourself. I'm still taking care of myself. I'm still, you know, exercising. I'm still eating well. I'm still taking care of my family. But um, so I'm taking care of myself and whatever comes out of my cup into the saucer, I'm able to give selflessly. And that's what I feel like is just coming back tenfold. And my passion continues, you know, left and right. So I have all these ideas that keep on just coming through and just like, 
comes out. So the books are the best way to do that. It's beautiful. And the word that resonates with me is synchronicity. As I said, you, you come from this space. Okay, I've got a message to share. Now, I might, we, can, we can all experience uncertainty or doubt or insecurity. We may have fears. And if we, if we transcend them and say, I've got a message, I know that I can serve, I know that I can impact, I, but I've got to overcome that thought within that fear that may prevent me. And then when we do, we step boldly into our power, share our message. And, and for you, you put it into a book and it created a cascade of synchronistic events, one thing leading to another, creating opportunity, speaking engagements, the ability to um, transcend your, your, your view of the world into a, a global opportunity. Your platform Absolutely. grows. I mean, the opportunities that come as a result of speaking your truth, sharing your message, mm-hmm. when, when you tell this story, it shows that the greater service you provide, the bigger heart that you have, the selflessness that goes with not just writing a book but sharing that message, can impact the world and put you in places of even greater service opportunities. So we continue to dig, dig our well so that we can bring out all of that that is within us so that we can leave the greatest legacy from our time, our effort, our energy. And I love your story because it shows that the heart really does create everything in terms of opportunity. So it's just beautiful hearing that and the synchronicity that comes from. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, no, and it's, I think it also comes out to, I think, coming out yeah, of your comfort zone. All these things were coming out of my comfort zone. You know, me as stuck on this hamster wheel all my life, and now to come out of this, and, and think about this, I'm like in a, in a family that only practices conventional medicine. Nobody else does, and so now I had to come out of my comfort zone. Um, the, our dinner conversations were just medicine. Like that's how we were like that's, and now you're bringing on that. Oh, I'm, you know, coming out of my comfort zone. And as I was coming out of my comfort zone, I realized, oh my gosh, this world is so beautiful. I need to share this with everybody. It's just so awesome. But, and then same with coming out of your comfort zone, by approaching somebody coming out of your comfort zone by helping somebody. And, um, and now to the point where, just by coming out of your comfort zone, you see how amazing things can actually be. And um, I know just by coming out of my comfort zone and educating the populations of health and wellness and then trying to educate kids, I had not seen up till now, nobody's really teaching, you know, five-year-old leaky gut and things like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to let's do this and get you on. I know you, this is just, we're going to get you out of your comfort zone. You're going to tell the world on camera. So yes, I'm doing that with my kids too. Let's get out of your comfort zone. Then you can really educate and empower. And that that really does make such a big difference. And you can totally reap the benefits and hopefully help you get to the very next level. And I I just want to ask a question around that because were there any times you felt uncertain or didn't believe that you could write a book or that maybe putting yourself out there in that uncomfortable zone, that vulnerability that you might have, you know, somebody might criticise you or someone might say, who are you to write this book? Or, you know, have you experienced any of these? And if you did, oh, you overcome them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, I think, so, one, yes, because of the fact that um, I, one, I hated writing. I have to be completely honest. I hate writing. <laughs> I went into medicine because I didn't have to write as much. So the, I so I knew I always loved to teach. That I always knew. And um, I always wanted to teach. But then I never wanted to write. And even English literature class, forget it. Like this is just like pulling teeth for me. So that was definitely out of my comfort zone. And I'm only writing. I tell people I'm like only writing only because I know I'll benefit somebody. Just like, I mean, I hated breastfeeding, but I only did it because I (laughs) know I'll benefit somebody. (laughs) I know if it's a terrible condition, but those things that may give you some discomfort can later on be beneficial for others around you and yourself. And, um, And I think that was one. Plus I lived in a culture, not the religion itself, the religion is beautiful, but it's the culture it was, um, you know, being born, my parents and my, the, the actually more of my relatives being born and raised in Pakistan. 
And it's like, oh no, a mother needs to just take care of her children, leave her dreams for that. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to screw it. I'm going to show you, you can do both, you know? <laughs> so I did, I get that, that. I got that. Okay. Your job is to take care of these kids. And I was so even literally on the way I was I, with my third, with my fourth child, I took the computer to, as I was still in labor, I took the computer to the delivery room to try to finish my book. Uh, I'm like, uh, I'm going to make sure that this happens. Because <laughs> so, they're like, well, you're going to take it? I'm like, yeah, you give me the epidural. I'm holistic and everything besides for that. <laughs> and then I'm going to continue to write. They just laughed at me. But what I'm trying to say is that you don't want anybody to stop you from your dream. Because it is possible to have both different worlds. I have a so a little bit more about my background and my personal history is that I'm married to a Pakistani man who was born and raised in Pakistan. So uh, he's an amazing human being, but we're culturally different, very cultural. Even though I was born, yes, I may look like them, but I was born and raised here, where here, where he was born and raised in Pakistan. Um, and I live with a family of eight, so I feed a family of eight on a daily basis. On the weekends, because he's the oldest son, on the weekends before COVID, thank God for COVID, I don't know, but like <laughs> before, before COVID, uh, every other weekend, his, all of his family that were around town would come over and spend the, spend the weekend with us, spend the week, it was breaks with us. So that would go to like 20, 50, you know, 15 to 20 people, 13 to 20 people, every other weeks and guess who was in charge of all of it. <laughs> so even despite that, I was like, I'm going to make sure all that stuff. Yes. I'm making sure I got all that done, checking all those boxes and then getting back to my book. So there was, there were a lot of hurdles, but when I had a, when I had a will and a passion, there was nobody. And actually, actually that's what my husband told me. He's like, okay, if I tell you not to do it, you're going to make you make sure you do that tenfold. And I was like, yes, that's what's going to happen. And, um, and I think that's where I went. I just had a mission. I had a drive. Nothing stopped me from it. Uh, despite all the craziness, I tended to stay away from those people that told me that I couldn't do something. And that's what's really important. And I think what, what did get me through this entire situation and all the hurdles was um, to, to concentrate on the positive. Back to what my parents had taught me. That in any situation, you are one to tell them, you can never tell anybody you can't do something. Like you can do anything you put your mind to. And two, to focus on all the things that people are doing right, not what people are doing wrong. Because if you start focusing on all the negative the pe things people do or negative things people say or the negative things that are going on in your life, it's very difficult to get this at any other level. <laughs> so I had to concentrate on the positive when I concentrated on the positive, I brought more positivity to my life, and that just elevated me to a level that I could not imagine. So positivity has changed my life. Positivity, meditation, and then keeps to keeping those people around me that really believed in me. That's beautiful. And many people do second guess themselves that you have this doubt or uncertainty, but when you do bring that positivity to it, when you I guess you said you had the drive, but you also had this enthusiasm. And more important, I think if I Again, I extrapolate what you're saying and I, I, I'll, I'll take a quote that everybody knows. It's if you have a big enough why, you will always find the how. And you have this message that you want to share. It was bursting out of you. There was a necessity. Oh, yeah. And you wouldn't it let the doubt <laughs> out overcome you. So your why drove you, your purpose magnified the energy to be able to overcome any obstacle, any hurdle. And so for those people listening, you, you can achieve anything you put your mind mm -hmm. to when you have a reason. And that motivation drives your actions and your energy fuels your ability to move forward. Um, Dr. Seed shows that there are no limitations. And, and when we apply ourselves to that vision, incredible, and you've, we've already spoke about synchronicity, incredible experiences take place as a result of that. And I'm so excited to hear this journey and, and your, your story because it shows the possibility of an idea to transform a person's world and then the lives of tens, hundreds of thousands of other people as well. And how it continues to, to populate more opportunity because the first book planted seed for a second book, for a third book. And as you said, you're going to continue to go. It, it doesn't stop. It actually builds momentum and energy of itself. 
because you lose that which is within you. And that's so exciting to know that it becomes a cascading, a, a cascading ball of unrelenting positivity. That's Absolutely. What. Absolutely. And that's where if I wasn't able to get out of my comfort zone, if I was able to, uh, if I wasn't, um, you know, if I, if I stayed stuck in the negativity of the environment, telling them, sorry, you can't do that. I have four boys, 12, seven, uh, nine, and five. And I wrote this while they were all really young, while I was trying to balance all these other things. And if I st stayed in that negativity and thinking, oh my God, I can't do it. Oh, I, if I stayed within my comfort zone, they didn't get out of my comfort zone. So the person that I met, um, who's second in charge of the United Nations, he actually has already changed the, the diet of the African Union just by everything that we had taught. And so he's, we, he's ready to even like, to him, he's actually working with the United Nations and everybody to really create policy changes. And so it, it, it was just like what you said, it was just one cascading thing after another. And where you think, oh, I can't, I'm just one person, I can't make a difference. Yes, you can make a difference. And this is, I think, that every single solitary day, every day that I get out of my comfort zone and try to um, get past these obstacles and stay positive, it really just cascades into something greater. And, and I'm, uh, I'm, it's so funny. My kids actually, uh, we were folding laundry uh, a couple days ago. And I was like, why are you guys such good kids? Like, so they're doing podcasts with me. They're helping me clean the house. They're doing all these things. I'm like, why are you such good kids? They're like, mom, um, because it's a trade. The universe wants you to change the world. And so therefore he gave you good kids. So therefore you, we can help you change the world. And I was like, ah! <laughs> so now what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it started off with, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and educating your families. And we, we sometimes we think that our children are our obstacles, our families are our obstacles, but sometimes they can become your biggest, you know, allies and they really help you up there. And that was my seven-year-old that said it. So they're really like, I know. <laughs> I was like, okay, you guys are so cute. But, um, but it's just, it's just so rewarding to see that in every level. And that's why if anybody is like, reluctant 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 there we go that's the word please if i can do it anybody can do it is really where i because they were i did not know a single thing about writing <laughs> because i hated it and now i'm working on um my fifth book so mm -hmm. something crazy <laughs> really i love that the thought creates the book the book can change the world when the opportunity is allowed to express itself. I think that's just beautiful and incredible. Mm -hmm. I often, and, I, and you answered, I often close the interview by asking, you know, what message would you have? You just shared that message. So I want to do something a little bit different because I think, again, you're so passionate and have so much energy. Um, rather than ask, you know, what message do you have for the person who wants to write a book, you already gave that. I'm going to ask if I can for you to dig really deep into this answer. What message do you have for the practitioner out there that, doesn't know whether or not they have within them a story to tell, a message to share, the ability to impact the world. They're just a doctor working at, you know, in, in a family practice or a chiropractor who's adjusting spines or a naturopath who, you know, just works with fertility. You know, there, there may be all of this, they, they're just, the word just, and you know, I really am opposed to the word just, let me make that really clear. You know, even if, if someone says, I'm just a reception, get the word just out in front of a receptionist, you are a life changer. So the person that says, well, that's all right for you. You've got this compelling story. You've got this amazing life. You've got this family culture. And, you know, I don't have all of that. I'm just me. I'm just a normal everyday practitioner that can't possibly change the world. What would you say to the person who really feels like they aren't a world changer? They don't have a game changing message or the same capacity to find the words to share the story that they actually, in my mind, because I believe everyone hasn't got a story that can change lives. Mm -hmm. How would you talk to that person? I do. I honestly believe that everybody has their individual specialty because what's lacking in me, I'm not perfect. What's lacking in me, it, it, you are doing amazing, right? And so 
everybody does have a story. Everybody has their strength. And not until we come together and join together in unity, because specifically as practitioners, and we need to come together as a unified force. Um, and that too, specifically as holistic practitioners or, you know, conventional or somebody who's ready to really empower others with their story, that in and of itself, I think we have been taught in medicine that none of that really matters. It's just, I think that's, we've been sort of brainwashed to believing that you're just, just like everybody else. You're just a family physician. You are just um, um, you know, um, another doctor, you're just somebody else, just stay on the hamster wheel, don't go out, don't think about this. But once we start impacting people with our stories, it makes, it can change one life. If it can change one life, it can change a million lives. And so that's where I feel that all of those can really make a huge impact. Because if you have the power to heal one, you can have the power to heal a million. And everybody brings something different to the table. So those specific things that I don't have, you do. And we can really work together as a whole unified source to bring that impact to an exponential growth. So I hope that it does. It really, we need to come together. And I really feel that writing a book getting your message out there, impacting, you know, right now, I think practitioners are just working on the one-to-one -one basis. But when you write a book, now you've impacted so many more. So that time that you would have spent on an hour per patient, if you just spend, you know, you know, that's going to take time, but like whatever it is, but you, now you've got one hour, somebody can read your book and that 10, 20 people can be reading your book at the same time. Now you just influence this 20. So whatever story that you already have that you're sharing with one, put that all in a book and now you can be, take that and grow that experience. That's beautiful. Again, come from a place of service and it will magnify in the world. Yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> so Ed, you are a, a blessing to the planet and I am grateful for all that you do, the service you provide. I know that there are many children's lives that are enhanced and improved in so many communities that are, have been changed by your message and by your service and your contribution. That's so sweet. Thank you. I am grateful for you. I'm grateful for the message you provided. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. I look forward to speaking with you again at another event. Yay. Thank you, guys. You guys got this. Woo!